office so i am dialing in most of the employees you know we are in the office today is friday few of us are here <laughs> uh, that's great you know i've never been to madison but i worked I had a colleague who taught at university of wisconsin at madison in the chemistry department uh, was a yep. professor there for years and uh, it sounds like a pretty amazing place awesome great to hear yeah today speaking of that today wisconsin is having some basketball game oh. against boiler maker pod so <laughs> I don't call I don't follow college basketball but I know that it's a I mean that's a big deal. Yes, right? big deal. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um well before we were live you were talking about the movie Air, right that you saw recently? Yes. So I am part of the run club in Madison like you were talking about oh. your former colleague going for UW Wisconsin. So a yeah. lot of a lot of our team members we formed a run club. and then there is a organization called fleet fleet what they do you know they motivate us to keep running keep moving keep the energy uh, going <laughs> uh -huh. and during the beginning of this year when it was winter in wisconsin compared to la where you are <laughs> <laughs> yeah so they said hi guys today we are going for a movie night then they okay. said we are reserving the spot the whole theater will be filled by all the runners who is who are part of the run club so i was part of it and they asked me to bring the family also i ended up watching the air movie <laughs> yeah i thought it was i thought it was great i saw it with my kids maybe two or three weeks ago nice and i i mean it 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 spoke to me because i remember in the 80s when no one wore nikes yeah and then i remember at in a very short period of time it's like that was it was like nike basketball shoes were the thing I remember yep. that. Absolutely, I think in the movie how persistent they were to get the Nike to enter into basketball market for the shoes. Yeah. If you yeah, recollect, I mean, I mean we, we don't want to give any spoilers away. If you haven't seen it, you should see it. It's been really, really fun. Um, yes, it was very good. And then you know, yes, for me, you know, they were going back and forth. and one of the scenario where in which the ceo says hey let me go for a run to solve it of us problem <laughs> yeah 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 you know you know what i've always i read this once and it made total sense it was like you eat food for your body and you exercise for your mind and it made a lot of sense when i read that <laughs> cuz it's true i mean of course you exercise for your body but boy what a great way to like clear your head you know These days there's so much stress with all the things that we do. Yes. And all the responsibilities and I I I don't I'm not a runner, I'm a cyclist and I recently started uh like indoor rock climbing. It is just the best way to clear my head. Yeah. Absolutely. Even in our office yesterday one of our uh session during brainstorming, one of the colleagues started, "Hey, today we are going to have a ice breaker. During the ice breaker, how to de-stress yourself." So we all shared our mm -hmm. own experiences. Oh, oh well, what did you share? Didi, you can't you can't you can't bring it up and that's saying what you share. What did you share? You're like, "Oh no." I brought everything. Whatever I do apart from work and then yeah. get ready for the next day and spend more time with family, doing yes. dishes for the home. Really? Yes. Wait, so dishes are your job too? Yes. Yeah, me too. Like kind of the kitchen is like my domain, right? Exactly. I mean, I do some of the cooking, but like the kitchen is like that I keep like you try to load my dishwasher you're going to find that I'm going to unload it and reload it the way I like it loaded <laughs> exactly being mechanical engineering yeah. team, using solid works makes us to do systematically arranging make sure we are aligning all the patterns everything we whatever we studied made oh yeah it's Assembling. nesting it, exactly <laughs> <laughs> it's it's nesting yeah it's like i have my own internal nesting software don't mess with it That's right. <laughs> Fully agreed Andrew. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh you know, I read Brian Cranston's book uh 3 4 months ago. It was called A Life in Parts. Pretty good book. But he said the same I remember hearing he's like he's like do not load my dishwasher for me. I was like, yes. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> my dishwasher. <laughs> yes. Yes. And then the Nike movie which we talked it says yeah. shoe is just a shoe until someone steps into it ooh yeah that was a good line wasn't that yeah. you know you yeah. have to wonder was that was that put together like did, did that line come from 
those folks back in Nike in the 80s? Or was that someone using their their creative license to, uh, to <laughs> put the words into those folks' mouth? Could have been, could have been either. But yeah, right. Exactly. You don't know. <laughs> it's true. That was a good yep. one. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go ahead and, and kick off the show. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Um, it is Friday. That's awesome. And it is SolidWorks Live Design. My name is Andrew Gross. Uh, I work at SolidWorks. Uh, and I have the absolute pleasure to introduce a friend and colleague and uh, a constant champion, a partner, uh, Didi. So, Didi, thank you so much for joining. Maybe you can introduce yourself a little bit. Hi, Andrew and the community. Thank you so much for having me. It's really an honor for me to be in front of everyone after a long time because, you know, this gives me energy back to do my job very well. So my name is D. Dunaikanu. Everyone calls me DD, as you all know. I'm working in GE Healthcare, making some anesthesia machines, design, development, following up until the production is launched. So we do whole cycle and modeling and simulation using SOLIDWORKS Desol system products in both desktop and 3D experience, plus standalone Abacus really helps me to do my job very well. I mean, that's, so you oversee that entire process. Like, yes, that's so exciting. I mean, a lot of times when we think about working as a mechanical engineer in a, a large company like GE, you know, I, I remember when I was a junior engineer and you were told, oh, well, you'll just be seeing this piece of the process. I'm like, well, what happens before it comes to me? Well, don't worry about that. What happens after it comes to me? Oh, don't worry about that. You just focus <laughs> on this little piece of it. And the, I found that not very inspiring as an engineer, ooh. to be honest with you. Uh, it's so cool that you get to see all the way from concept all the way till widgets or whatever it is are pumping out on the on the shop floor, right? That's you crazy. nailed it down, Andy. It's because, you know, we use SOLIDWORKS. And we are modeling and designing in the environment yes. as part of the platform. So what happens, you know, it connects everybody. So because of my job role doing modeling and simulation for most of or all of the product with respect to anesthesia, respiratory care, it makes me to interact with the everyone to do the job correctly because we are replacing all the physical tests by virtual simulation. Even on the new program which we are working on, we have done everything until the final verification and validation stage. So not only do you need to be a, an extremely skilled and knowledgeable designer and mechanical engineer, you need to be a skilled communicator, right? Uh, I mean, communication is key. Collaboration and communication is key for me. Because, you know, if I, like we were talking in the beginning, if I yeah. keep it within myself, I'm not improving. I'm not learning anything mm. new. When I share my idea with my coworkers and SOLIDWORKS community, wherever I am interfacing, even in the run club when we are running, discuss mm -hmm. something, we get a new idea, and then go and solve the problem. It makes the problem compared to yesterday, mm -hmm. today is easy approach. Love it. No, it's so true. You know, and especially when you're collaborating with people that maybe aren't completely in your industry, right? Yes. I mean, you had yes. mentioned, but, but right before we were live, you were talking about uh, the salespeople at, in the movie Air, right? We're going to go back to the movie Air. How much they, <laughs> people in sales, influence yes. r and And, you know, sometimes people think like, are fright, oh gosh, I don't want sales to influence R&D. They're out there just selling stuff. They don't design anything. But it's so true. You know, you're collaborating with people who may not do your job. And sometimes exactly. that can just create ideas that you never would have come up with. Exactly. So for example, if you are in sales, if I am in sales, helping a lot of software sales for our organization. Mm -hmm. Then you are put into R&D work one way or other. So you, when you were in sales, you know the customers and their needs very well. Say I'm a field mm -hmm. application engineer example. I'm playing a role of GE Healthcare. I am in front of the customer every single day. After a few years, I'm coming back to R&D. How much wealth I'm bringing in mm -hmm. being detailing, learning about the customer and their demands. When I design using SOLIDWORKS, it makes the job pretty easy. So that's why interacting with the non-engineering departments plays a key role. Even the administrative office staff. Even administration? <laughs> yes, yes. Because, you know, we, we differentiate ourselves, administration, engineering, yeah. manufacturing, plant. So whether we are a, any role, 
plays a key role in design thinking so we got to hear from every single person mm -hmm. as much as possible to make the best product and create a wonderful ecosystem you know i mean you bring it up it, it's you put it well i mean it's we always think of like these it's very siloed departments why would administration need to talk to r and d why would r and d need to talk to marketing but it's true you yes. you you unsilo desilo is that a word something like that and everyone you know working together in a collaborative environment it's so cool well, exactly and yeah so what do you have to show today because i saw a glimpse oh, of it and, 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 and <laughs> what it feels like this conversation we're having kind of organically fell a little bit on what you're showing today yeah today the goal is design thinking starting from the days of thomas edison to till now how we are doing it Whenever you're ready, design. you can go through it. Andrew. Well, I just want to say, I heard this term design thinking and it, I had to like pause for a second. Design mm. thinking. That's like, tell me more. I can't wait to hear more. <laughs> okay. Design thinking is nothing but it's a process for any organization to design great products, processes, services, and come up with a great strategy. It started during Thomas Edison time itself. Here, we are talking about. Yes, so I'm going through this. Yeah, maybe it looks like your, your, your slides aren't advancing the way you expect them to. We've been in your <laughs> shoes a million times. There we go. All right. Yes. Oh, cool. yes, let me see. Okay, let me see uh, how to do. Well, while you're doing that, I just want to read these words that we have here and how they're connected. So we start with empathy. Man, how cool is that? <laughs> like sometimes in the world of engineering, the word empathy is like, that's not a word that I use at work. <laughs> but you're leading <laughs> with that here. Can't wait to see that. Yes, Andrew. So the good news about design thinking is we put the people, our customer first. Mm. That's the most important thing because, you know, without people first approach, getting the customer needs requirement very well, we cannot do our job. We may go in one silo mode, other engineer who is my colleague or anyone, they will go in different mode. Mm. So we are not focusing on the customer. So first is the people first approach is the main theme of design thinking in order to come up with a very good idea concept, make a digital prototype or virtual prototype, test it, repeat it. So we all do design thinking every day, but are we putting people first during our day to day job? So design thinking helps us to repeat the cycle. Whenever you do any new project, do a physical test or modeling or simulation from each iteration or cycle, we got to learn at least one thing. It forces us to learn from the experiment or testing or simulation, whatever we do. And it's a cross-functional or system level approach. I cannot do it my own way. I cannot lean on myself. Oh, yeah, yeah I know simulation very well. I do this. I know SOLIDWORKS very well. We are using 3D experience, so many things. We do PDM and everything. You know, at the end of the day, am I talking to my colleague who is a system engineer? Other colleague who is a validation engineer, say the people who provide the budget program management or product management who controls the entire product, are we talking to them? And when you are entering the office, the receptionist will be there. Are we collecting some feedback from them? Just, hey, we are going for a meeting. Today is our focus is come up with a great design shape for the R we call designer level r d shape for the product so how do you come up with the critical shape hmm. so talking to everyone making it happen really part of the design thinking approach we are following it up well i mean I've, and I've, it I've, can I've, be used. oh sorry sorry go on d i didn't want to interrupt no, no, you no. but there's a couple things on this slide that i think that i've never seen before hard work is more consistent than a stroke of genius that's uh that's kind of one of those things you read and like kind of mix your brain tingle a little bit. You're like, oh, yes. Interesting. That's why I said 
keep on re- refining your models or design and learn from it hard work is the key yeah and cool. it can be used for any product say you are working on a current anesthesia machine or future anesthesia machine you want to optimize the time of getting the operation room ready for the physician or doctor in the operation room how do you get it fast you have to come up with a new npi new product innovation mm-hmm. during that time we can apply this concept oh yeah we are working on a product where in which we need to redo some parts to save some cost go for the design thinking approach and work on the existing product line too so it covers the entire spectrum mm-hmm. uh, the most important like you said hard work people and system level approach it's <laughs> cool cuz yeah i mean when you think of that hard work more consistent the stroke of genius right you're sometimes as some, as a designer you're like waiting for this like inspirational moment where like this stroke of genius happens to you and it's true that I, and i like thinking that you know if i work hard that's just a natural progression i'm going to the ideas will come as opposed to just assuming that this stroke of genius happens i just i really love it because it's yeah thank you for sharing that because you know it's you nailed it down stroke of genius yeah <laughs> hard work excellent cool so it started how we are doing today in our g healthcare environment it started by edison you may be knowing edison invented everything starting from the light bulb only we all recollect right yes but he created the entire ecosystem hmm. he not only did the light bulb but also the transmission line power generation line that's interesting so the yes and most important thing is he was not a lone designer he had people behind him supporting everything hmm. so yeah in mel yeah in 1889 if you recall <laughs> yeah so what i heard is he had a lot of people behind him he was not a lone genius inventor okay he had tinkerer experimentalist everyone behind him to support the entire ecosystem he created but for us ordinary day to day designers engineers solid works community users oh yeah yeah edison invented light bulb but he created the entire ecosystem so well, by following this approach yes go ahead oh, what's also interesting when you say that is that uh, it's interesting how the collaborative collaborative environment that i guess uh, you know edison worked in at the time and all the people that helped him out those people were kind of lost to history that kind of bumps me out a little bit you know i mean it wasn't <laughs> just like this one person that did all of this work but uh, to the history is written by the people who win i guess so <laughs> so we think oh edison it was just one person in a giant warehouse doing all these things and it of all this work of course that's not yes and then he taught us one important thing he want us to fail mm. learn from it every single time so most of the time you know oh yeah if my model doesn't converge yeah i cannot do the job today so those kind of things he completely forgot it. he wants us to fail why the model is not converging why the design is not fitting in my entire assembly so we want to follow the approach of learning from our failures mm-hmm. i love it i love it and following that approach we are making anesthesia machine as i mentioned in the beginning of the conversation i would like to show how we are using this digital prototyping he mentioned design come up with the innovation test it by making a prototype so what we are doing in our company we are transferring that prototype as a digital prototype using modeling and simulation approach very cool yes so we can see some of the cfd work we have done on few of the areas the reason i am bringing this cfd fea as a virtual prototype environment and testing for our team and communities it plays a vital role in any products very important so lot of people afraid of cfd mm. oh it's hard subject it's a dry subject all right that's <laughs> but, a, that's a that's a clever pun but <laughs> <laughs> but we want to remove that fear from everyone yes why you know 
we are not working hard enough like the nike story we discussed in the beginning mm-hmm. edison story we discussed in the article and finally we are putting everything together by going to the cfd approach as well as the fe approach because these are all not easy for most of the people mm-hmm. but we want to make it easy yeah i can't wait to see it excellent so these are the missions we do in our company where in which you know we got to deliver a anesthetic agent for a patient in the hospital that to in or so the time is crucial the machine needs to be ready as soon as you plugged in very quickly and today's current products when we put the vaporizer to the operation mm-hmm. it gets warms up it goes to the production line everything we are making three to four different types of anesthesia machines andrew so during that time when we are putting the anesthetic agent which is in the liquid form mm-hmm. some of them fills spills to the ground some of them okay. so here our our management want us to save the cost okay at the same time make it environmental friendly so these are as, as you are seeing here we use desflurane sevoflurane isoflurane all this anesthetic agent mm-hmm. comes in the liquid form okay so what you are seeing here is the vaporizer it's the heart of the engine or engine of the entire car that's our heart same thing this is the vaporizer goes into all these machines so so what i'm interested here i mean i'm kind of looking through this slide um right so i mean i guess you know I, I, as as a complete uh novice of of anesthesia or someone that knows nothing about it uh right of course <laughs> it starts in a liquid form it needs to yeah. be vaporized to a gas before delivery that makes a lot of you've sense you've got it it's not like you oh. are it's not like a pressurized gas container that is connected nope. here it's of course it would be shipped into liquid form to be vaporized yeah there's a lot of physics there a lot of physics a lot of physics a lot of physics so in order to understand the physics again we follow design thinking approach okay andy today we are going to solve this problem yeah what are the physics behind each and every subsystem in this machine oh can't wait so we nail it down yeah we nail it down we write it down and then identify what is customers needs and demands okay here we wanted to solve without wasting any liquid going to the ground mm-hmm. that's the key both in our assembly plant but also in the or operations right i mean for the doctor and it's another i mean in, in things that need to be uh, right. historic designs improve, require improve. Exactly. interrupted delivery so so if you run out of the agent you you have a patient that still needs to be under anesthesia so you're cutting off the 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 and the anesthesia medication or or drug yep. uh to to yep. replace that that's a that's, that's a challenge <laughs> you are providing continuous continuous injection of this agents yes. to the patient who is in a critical care hmm. ventilation mode okay <laughs> yep so big problems that's why the to project solve, by the way this one yes <laughs> yes speaking for the audience and I, these are big problems <laughs> <laughs> big, big things <laughs> the best part is i'm not alone people behind me are helping me yes <laughs> okay yes so what we did we started with uh, getting the requirement from every product team and then they said a goal ho oh, high sometime we are wasting this 5 ml to the ground so how can we save it and then they want us how can we do it faster right now it takes 2 minutes we wanted to get it done within 45 seconds and then we want to save the cost which is part of every design engineer's job we have to save the cost safety and friendly to the environment okay how can you put those requirement into practice understand the physics like you nailed it down yes so we got the i went and saw the how this liquid agent is from the bottle being poured in the current machines and then my principal engineer and i discussed the idea hi solidworks came with this free surface new feature <laughs> how can we use those so we are one of the first adapter of that technology from solidworks flow simulation Well, and what I'm, what I'm stuck on here is this use emissible 
flow of modeling. Yes. Immissible flow. Yes. So like you're using two different agents that don't, that, that, that are, that, that are, that can't mix. So like oil and water, for, for instance. Yes. Immissible flow modeling capability. I'm just very interested. That's Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just, I was like, how does that work? What, what, that's that's oh, an interesting yeah. way to yes. solve the problem. So like water and air, how it works. So I did a simple example before we go deep into the entire assembly. Because, you know, the design thinking asks us to start with simple, do the physics correctly, then implement the same idea into the larger model. Mm -hmm. So we do it on every single project in our modeling and simulation group. So we did a small water, air, mixed, use the tool, and it gave us a good indication. Then what? upon learning from that, we went to the full model and studied the whole scenario. And since it is the first project, our team wanted to test it also. Validate the model, which is key. Because you know, every company has certain line of programs. And then once we do the first work, it becomes a standard work. So you are not just one person doing the work. Once you mm -hmm. adopt this first R&D project with modeling and simulation, say one load case in this scenario, I am passing on to my team members to learn the tool and become expert in it. While yes. they're learning and adopting this technology, I'm into something else like electronic cooling. So <laughs> let's work on that project. <laughs> so it's like, okay, cool. You now, now on to a different problem. <laughs> yes. Now on to yes. I mean, you're like the fixer. Yes. Like Didi, I see you there at GE in this project. You're like, okay, this is a problem too. That's too too big for us. We need to go to Didi. He needs to solve this for us. We need to go to the biggest brain, the biggest brain we have access to. Then I will say, please coach me with the R and D behind it. Mm. Physics behind it is the key uh, in solving problems, yes. and our management wants solve higher end problems, more yes. complex problem with the easy approach in hand. They support everything, whatever is needed, like every SolidWorks uses company. We yeah. want simple approach, get the buy-in from management team and solve it. Once you solve it, give it to your friends or coworkers to get familiar with it. So how did we do in the CAD side? We created yeah. maids, we created the assembly, how much fast we are able to create an entire assembly in SolidWorks environment both in desktop and 3D experience. Same thing we are doing in the simulation world. So cool. Yes, Andy, I did a boundary condition, everything, I set it up. Finally, what happened? We were able to prove it. We got only 13% difference between the test we did in our lab with the fill time of 36 or 34 in that ballpark mm -hmm. between modeling and simulation with respect to test. So what, walk me through this analysis a little bit more. So, so, so maybe you could, you could talk to me about the, the, the video that I'm watching. Yes. Talk, walk me through that. So the liquid is in the top container. Mm -hmm. We have like 50 millimeter, 250 ml. So we create okay. a fluid domain for that. And then the remaining is gas, in this case, desflurane in the vapor form. So once you set up the model, as I shown in the previous slide, turn the free surface, gravity on, mm -hmm. with respect to pressure potential in the initial condition, set up the refined mesh, turn it on, SolidWorks makes all the boundary condition calculations run behind the screen. So in any CFD code, mass, momentum, energy is the first thing running behind the screen. So I followed the same approach and SOLIDWORKS flow simulation made me as a standard tool, put a fluid domain, input the properties, mainly the viscosity. Mm. Yes, that's very important. And then the gaseous form of the viscosity as well as the liquid form of the same fluid. Okay. So we are having so, two fluid. Yes. So explain to me, explain to me, what is, what is free surface? Free yeah. surface means like a bubble formation. <laughs> a bubble formation. Okay. Yes. Yes. So when you are slashing a fuel tank, what happens? Mm -hmm. So it goes through the free surface using the surface tension effect. Yes. So it's that it's that 
it's that uh, it's the it, line between the liquid and the liquid gas, and the gas, right? Exactly. Right? Yes. Okay. And and yes. depending on what type of liquid you're using, whether it's uh, something like like you were saying, gasoline is going to have, or or something like uh, like rubbing alcohol, right? It's going to have a very different free surface effect than something like water. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. So okay. that's how we are using it. And this project motivated me not only do this free surface, but also made me, made my mind and my family and my company to study hard in this area. So I'm uh -huh. taking parallelly two phase flow class in boiling and condensation. <laughs> oh, two phase, at, two phase flow class in boiling and condensation. At Purdue University in West Lafayette, Indiana. No. Okay. <laughs> I'm liking, I'm liking, okay, this, this is, this is interesting to me. Two phase flow classes. So is this one class or is this a series of courses, this entire course? This semester I'm taking one class and next semester I'm going to take practical system level approach to solve the problems, mm. product and process design. So my plan is next to two to three years after work, I'll be studying this courses at Purdue University. And the most important thing, Andy, you asked me about free surface yes. using the simple model. Yes. Now we are doing a boiling of liquid. Same okay, water. now that's the, the physics there are. I mean, because <laughs> like maybe we can talk a little bit about what is two phase flow. So we're talking about phases of matter, right? Exactly. So okay, we have homogeneous model. Have you heard about it? And then, yes. yeah, exactly. Okay. So in two phase flow, what is happening? We are boiling a liquid. The vapor bubbles are created. Mm -hmm. Okay, those bubbles eventually become vapor. So in two phase flow, say a nuclear power plant or something, we are boiling using a furnace. We have series yes. of vertical tubes, and each tube has a liquid, and we are injecting heat Q, mm -hmm. <laughs> heat. Q dot we call in the yeah, so 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 in, yeah in in the world of uh, physics and chemistry and engineering Q is that that heat that's, flux. that's the that's the big one that's big word that's energy so energy going into a system right exactly and then you study how the bubble is being formed in the case of vertical tube in the case of horizontal tube in the case of vertical tube it's applicable in boiler if you are using a horizontal tube it's applicable in a condenser of your own HVAC in our houses. So the I mean, there's so many tangents we can take here discussion wise. Like, uh, I mean, let's, let's take HVAC as an example, uh, a yes. really good example of two phase flow that helps yes. all of us out yes. in any hot day. Yes. Right. So, uh, we have our, our refrigerant, right. That, that, uh, that is it's boiling point is like very close to room temperature. Right. And that's really key. So, uh, so we're using some of the physics of the fact that it's boiling temperature is very close to room temperature. And that kind of helps us uh, pull either pull energy out or pull heat out of a system or add heat to a system. Add to the system. Right? Exactly. Yes. In the case of uh, boiling, we are adding the heat. In the case of condensation, we are taking the heat out. So right. as a student, I'm doing like adiabatic and diabetic flow. <laughs> okay. Okay. Very. So what happened? Because of these additional studies and education I'm doing, it motivates me to do a good job for the problem which I am involved. This sounds extremely specific and extremely laser focused on the problem you're trying to solve. Absolutely, yeah, Andrew. Absolutely. So we did a validation and our company gave a green signal. So we were able to model a filling system like shown here. This is the filler. These are all the standard equipment. We came up with the adapter using design in flow simulation in SOLIDWORKS environment and okay. implemented it to replace so many multiple parts. So basically the old designs have gone. The new design is continuously we are able to fill it. Because of that, we are saving the environment. There is no wastage. Second mm. thing is we are providing savings to the organization. There is no spilling. Even though there was a minor from one to another fill when you are changing it, here we are saving the cost, saving the environment. Most importantly, you are continuously providing anesthetic agent to the patient who is in the critical care ventilation. 
I mean, what I love about this is that, I mean, I, I, I don't know the simplicity or the complexity of what I'm seeing because, you know, it's, it's hard to see that from this video, but I assume that it is, it was a, a, a simple, a simple, you know, Occam's razor says the simplest solution or is typically the correct one, but it, yes. it takes, but it takes a lot of hard work Absolutely. to get to the point of having that epiphany that this is how to do it the simplest way. Yep. To, to to put a check mark next to all those initiatives you have, like yes, like, in, environmental issues. Uh, you know, you're obviously thinking about the patient. You, you don't want to waste things. You want to save money. You want to look at uh, manufacturing costs of the device. I mean, all these things, really complex, high level issues, and in trying to put those all into one solution, it's a lot. Exactly that, because of that the takes design thinking, right? <laughs> Absolutely, because you know we listen to the customers at the end of the day, and we put hard work into it. And we discuss with the system team, multiple mm -hmm. departments from within the company, we put it into action. And right. because of that, we are able to see the simulation working in really changing the design. So cool. Validated <laughs> love. <laughs> stamp. Exactly. <laughs> now it becomes standard work. Whoever is making this adapter, he or she can take this assignment, move on to the solving and optimizing. So in with respect to innovation, we well, well, I just want to say something that came through from the, the chat here. Uh, Eric Beatty, uh, another longtime friend and colleague uh, of, for us at SolidWorks, he, he calls you Harvey Keitel from Pulp Fiction, who was called the wolf, right? He says uh, he makes problems go away. He's, he's comparing you to the wolf. Uh, it's a great example because you know the toughest problems if you've seen Pulp Fiction they bring in the character the wolf to go and and fix it to go and solve the problem you you are the you you are the fixer I love it great analogy Eric. thank you thank you thank you Eric <laughs> yes so we presented everything see the liquid coming down the vapor goes up and the adapter design positions everything we gave recommendation using simulation and this. These Super, are moving awesome on, moving on. Things. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Now I want to show something on the nonlinear FEA. So everything in the world is nonlinear problem. Okay. So one of the problem we got is snap fit application. Whenever you're ready. Sorry, ready I, I got I to interrupt because you said you keep saying these big <laughs> statements and just moving on. It's like, hold on. Hold your horses here. Everything's a nonlinear problem. And, but as an engineer, it's like, no, these are linear. The, the, when you look at the effect of this versus that, it's a linear comparison but you're like eh, not really <laughs> it's an approximation <laughs> right the reason is it's approximation how close we are to the approximation is the key so my colleague he did phd in structural mechanics and he transfer he always says by nature models are wrong how much wrong we are proving in simulation Ooh. all the <laughs> exactly he nailed it down in every <laughs> design review that's why he is one of the leading member in our team he makes sure that this by all, by nature the models are wrong how much wrong we are proving that really mm. helps young engineers to learn from each one of us yeah. and also the management team understands our value that's why they are giving us green signal to do more virtual simulation come up with the innovative design with respect to innovation most important thing some of us are gifted with the, come up with the concept development mm. Some of them are good in optimization. Some of them are good in implementation. Huh. It's good to know what you're good at, though, right? Exactly. So we got to identify who's, what is the good for me. So in my case, I may take the toughest problem, discuss with several people, solve it. And some of my colleagues are gifted with keep going with the optimization. So we give you a DOE study. They solve it. So. It becomes a standard work at the end of the day. We want to make simulation easy and useful for every modality within our organization. And through SolidWorks community, we want more people to use it. Once mm -hmm. you use it, you see the value of cost saving to the company in so many ways. Plus, not only cost saving, Andrew, especially the design thinking talks about launching quickly to the customer, product launch as much as faster think about the mm -hmm. car industries how long it used to take for car industry to come up with a brand new car how much changing now think about the electric vehicle 
and so many things since i am working on the healthcare industry we are following studying articles from every design simulation magazines and high end heat and mass transfer journals design thinking really helps us to come up with the great ideas and the most important thing i love about my job is talking to the solidworks users mm. through solidworks user group network and also the technical support coming from solidworks is really helpful where in which you know whatever we miss we get the knowledge from knowledge source of the sol systems it really helps mm-hmm. me yes and i share well, we love we, we so happy that 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 we can help you get your job done in it yes you because no, i cannot do like edison days itself he is not a lone designer so many people were behind him yes same way you are all behind us in solving this critical problem one of the critical problem is the non linear problem which i want to show you to all of us so we got a sensor okay in this first thing is design thinking makes me to think how this product works it goes inside apps another big assembly and we have vapor pressure coming inside this tube and we need to make sure that the o ring is compressed so mm. we need to have a perfect compression ratio for the o ring and when we are inserting there is a snap fit going into the metal and then going into the slots here so we want to make sure everything should be done it's a high end non linear problem in our company <laughs> because you know you are talking about yeah go ahead it, it, it well i'm just saying yes it's a high end yet very common this is something that we do every day right yes. push one thing into another it's got an o ring you got to make sure yes. you push it hard enough not too hard right but you also have to make sure that the locking mechanism those barbs on you know it's locked in there well but enough like you're saying to compress that epdm 60 o ring exactly as you need it to be compressed exactly right? and then we need to tighten up with the two screws initially design had one mm-hmm. screw and then we gave design recommendations made into two so bolted joint plays a key role contacts plays a key role vapor pressure plays a key role plus mm-hmm. the o ring compression plays a key role and then when you are pushing what is the force needed to push it when it goes to the plant so we can give you a torque recommendation or force recommendation to the team who is going to assemble in the plant or maybe it may be coming from a supplier who is doing the sub assembly of it we need to give manufacturing recommendation at the end mm-hmm. of the day design thinking says the product needs to be launched on time so that's why i'm using this virtual modeling and simulation is part of my virtual prototype building well this is the, ooh that's a nice looking mesh yes go ahead that's it oh no i just like it's a really nice <laughs> it's a beautiful mesh i mean i love yes. how i love the mesh density of the areas of those uh those snap fits because that's going to be those are going to bend a lot and exactly. all the contacts as they slide in just like on a backpack right the the little clips on a backpack yep. it's very much the same same mechanism ish similar mechanism right. but it goes into the anesthetic agent within a sub assembly with the liquid and so many interfaces are occurring that's why the vapor pressure is one of the key for us it it should not fail when the vapor pressure acting on all the surfaces of this product one of the failure mode and then another challenge you know as a cad engineer you can call me as a modeling or anything what happens when we get the models it has initial interference in the model penetration mm-hmm. the 3d experience platform abacus automatically removes the interference for me oh yeah cuz i i can see here that you're this is not a solid work simulation i can see from your feature manager here uh, i recognize that as from abacus Correct. Exactly, exactly. And then it gives me a approachable way to solve the problem. Like we were talking about pressure drop. Pressure drop can come from friction, acceleration or gravity when you are talking about boiling condensation. Same way here in the structural problem, map it out whatever we are learning in CFD world or heat transfer world into the structural side. So that's why I put the operation how the sequence goes. First mm. I need to remove a intersection in the model so i am using a over closure of the wiring feature available within the abacus 3d experience platform once we finish that keep on going with the sequence of pressing it so that it snaps 
once it snaps it goes to the position and then once the pot comes closer you'll be able to see in the subsequent animation i am going to share with everyone once it comes together apply a vapor pressure and then bolted joint bolt pressure so 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 Didi, i just want to uh no no this is because this is this is really great and because i understand i i've used abacus i understand this but maybe we could we could explain to the audience a little bit uh it's the columns with all the blue marks right those columns each one of those is a different kind of physical step right it's like it's like it's uh i'm trying to think like a pen is just one step to go like this to, to close the pen but what you're doing is you're you're you're, you're, you're doing more than just one step of pushing it in. You're like, kind of, I mean, I'm trying to look around. It's like a co my coffee cup. It's like you're turning, say, the, the, the opening of the coffee cup, and then you're rotating the, the, the screw to get off, and then you're pulling that out, and then you're watching fluid slosh. You're, you're, you're doing multiple individual steps. Exactly. Right? Like, like, like that you're applying. It's, it's, yep. it's very complicated, That's, extremely complicated. Exactly. That's why, you know, I said higher and nonlinear problem in the beginning, but it's an everyday easy application. Yeah, it's day -day every day job. easy application. I mean, this is, a, <laughs> this, is a, this is a big one. I mean, I'm looking at this and I'm trying to think of uh, how much time it would take me to set up a study like this. Is, this is a big one. It's very, yes. very complex. The best thing is, Andrew, once you understand the mechanism and physics behind it, the software makes the job pretty easy. Just follow mm -hmm. the load step as I described in the blue column. Okay, over closure, snap fit, application of the load, bolted joint, and solve it. And I mean, before, <laughs> once you plan it, you got to go deep dive into the mesh. See the interference which is occurring in initial stage of the design which I received. So the O-ring uh, is for, for, for us FEA nerds, I mean, we look at this mesh and we're like, that's a, this is a nice <laughs> mesh. Uh, I mean, you have swept, swept quads or swept hex mesh on those, on the O-rings. Then you have tet mesh for some of the other structural elements. Uh, yep. And then mesh planning also makes very easy for us within this Abacus 3D experience world. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I plan it such a way. Wherever there is a high nonlinearity, deformation is occurring, we did refined mesh and hex mesh or brick mesh, whatever we call it, mm -hmm. remaining tetrahedrons. Because, you know, the tetrahedrons are load carrying members, whereas the ceiling is most important. Because, you know, we are developing a medical product where in which you got to prevent the leak in the system. You cannot make it leak and it has to reliable for longer time. So reliability design comes into picture. In order to do that, you need to have good mesh because I'm doing everything in virtual environment. Whenever it goes to verification, it should not fail. So the emphasis is do such a nice hard work, whatever Edison did in our day-to-day -day job with a passion in it with the full passion mm -hmm. it should not be considered as a work so by repeated like you said in the beginning by repeatedly doing the perspiration point come into picture this meshing took not even 30 40 minutes for me using the awesome. experience platform <laughs> that's great so we plan the mesh we plan the load cases so, so for non-engineers oh so i just want to just just uh explain really quick for non-engineers the how many mesh elements you have these little that you see these little they're they're just the uh, tetrahedral shapes or like little pyramid shapes or imagine constructing something like this case here out of a bunch of little teeny tiny little pyramids to build it right the more you have the more your result is going to be more accurate to the real world exactly um you can exactly. kind of think of it as like if someone asks you to draw a circle but you can only use four lines you end up with a square right but the more number of lines that they say you can use, you get closer and closer and closer to the actual shape of a circle. So the more little lines you can, so, so as you add more elements, in this case, little lines of our circle, you get more accurate representation of that circle. Does that, does that analogy make any sense at all? <laughs> Sorry, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, yep, yeah, that's the correct analogy because you know, the more mesh we have across those critical sections, it makes the convergence in finite element makes it very easy. And the mm -hmm. most important feature I used, Andrew, is general contact within Abaca software. Makes the oh. job easy for contact. Think about the contact, how much we have. In addition to the connector bolted joint, everything we set it up, yes. one click for generalized contact. The whole model 
only one click for general really yeah, yeah instead of going to local crazy. contact yeah how much pain it is for me to go and select each and everything in the other tools we define the local contact by like a mates go and check each mates okay <laughs> well and sometimes with something this complicated you may not even know all the exactly. parts that are going to all the parts are going to touch you may, you may not even exactly know. yes and the contact plot within solidworks simulation as well as in 3d experience tool really helps us to identify that big picture so we identify the big picture of loads big picture for meshing big picture for contact put everything together set up the model and run it while doing so your material models comes into picture so, another big question <laughs> it's exactly. a big exactly <laughs> so you are simulating a real world problem my management told not to do any physical testing immediately it has to be wow. done everything needs to be proved out in software using simulation especially from 3d experience abacus tool does a very good job in this project we use material calibration app got the epda material and we have a dma tester tool which generate the stress strain curve in one of our company division so you take that stress strain curve feed it into material calibration app come up with your all the constants material models needed for hyper elastic materials so you guys internally are using uh i i don't know if it's an angstrom machine or what sort of machine you're using but you're actually building that stress strain curve from actual raw material actual raw material because you know most of the time you may be using within epdm different varieties we have within yeah. silicon we have 60 70 so so many varieties are there because you know we are solving a medical equipment more or type important projects so we mm -hmm. got to get our own material store it in the database plug and place which makes the easy one for every one of us I mean we could we could spend an hour talking about material calibration <laughs> but it's really cool that you can take the raw data from that testing bring it into in this case abacus and abacus will create a material model that yes. uh perfectly resembles the realistic behavior of behavior that you test material that's the most Very important cool. because we are replacing the physical testing by simulation I mean that's I mean when when I worked as a uh, in the world of analysis it, it was one of the most common errors I would find when people would have a difficult time connecting the realistic bench test to a virtual simulation like this was because the material model was not accurate and uh, it's 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 kind of like if, if the material's not accurate the the result will never be accurate yep. so that's really cool that you're doing that thank you so the best part is again follow the design thinking approach of understand when i am running this model my customer is most important that comes to my mind because of design thinking and i am not running as a simulation analyst i am running modeling simulation engineer helping to launch this design release on time so whatever possible from my end i am delivering to my counterparts in our company that way you know they will be able to do it they will have conversation with their respective supplier we are getting ready for launch so here is the important thing first thing in fea how the snap fit occurs abacus did it for us i am just a user i follow the best practice given by deso system team both simulia side as well as solidworks side so first thing i mean for 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 uh someone who's not familiar with analysis they look at this and they're like okay well it was, you know, he snaps in and the whole thing moves not a big deal or for those of us who who have a little more familiarity with uh FEA this is a very complex study so much going on here you can see watching this animation and uh yeah that this is this is an impressive study yep because we took all the load cases physical sequence load step which we talked starting from interference removal it's called over closure to all the way to the application of the load so we combined everything we are seeing this combined effect and then we need to find out the stress where mm -hmm. it happens yep so look at that we were not able to do 
10 15 years ago in our organization we were leaning on more physical prototypes with the help of these simulation tools thinking about design we are able to show so just for the easy use of our users i made sure that red color is shown here in actual world it's not red <laughs> how it snaps so uh, so what what I'll kind of want to call out to the audience is after the, it snaps in and the entire cylinder is pushed into place, you'll notice uh, the cap, or I'm not sure, the, the part on, that I see on the left, the plastic part. You'll notice after everything's pushed together, a little red spot uh, arises yep. right now, as you can see on the left side. Um, so, th so imagine after this whole thing's connected, I believe you said, Didi, that you now pressurize the entire system. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. So I, I, so I would assume that's a result of that, of the, of the pressure, pressurizing the system, which is so cool. Absolutely. And then we are applying pressure in the opposite direction because the vapor pressure acts inside all the area where it touches. So we were able to show it and we gave a recommendation, no failure so far, it will continue because we want to prove it as a reliable design. Reliability is key in our organization. And then most important thing is contact pressure of the wiring so that we can select the correct wiring even if it changes due to supplier quality issues or something arises we will be able to recommend different types of wiring using this analysis we are not only just looking one design at a time but also multiple backup plan if anything goes wrong ah. due to supply chain issue or some pandemic anything happens those kind of uncertainty uncertainty comes so we want to make sure we are doing a due diligence as a designer, simulation engineer for our organization. So, so you'll test multiple different materials this early in the design process, just exactly. like looking because forward to the future and saying, these materials may not be available to us. Yes, yes. That's most important because, you know, design thinking talks about proactive approach and make sure you are ready for any last minute change. <laughs> So you're, you're, How many you're, you're solving problems before it's a problem. I mean, that's the that's so cool. It's, it's really very forward thinking. Have to have. It's very forward thinking. Forward thinking. Design is forward thinking, yes. That's great. So that's one of the things. Here is the going back to design thinking. I wanted to ask a question here. So on your left, the one without any plane model. So it's a MR machine being manufactured in Waukesha, another sub suburbs of Milwaukee. Okay, when the children goes there, they were getting afraid of it. It's a very good machine, designed perfectly. But one of my designer, he used design thinking, how to remove the fear of kids going to those machines whenever they do for scanning. They were terrified to go. So he made a field trip, studied it, he came up with the uh, innovative idea. He said, hi guys, whenever children are going, let's paint it and put this. some labels. Same mission, because he used design thinking approach. <laughs> I mean, I love, I mean, look, I had an MRI done off my shoulder about four months ago. And you know, it's, even as a middle-aged adult, <laughs> I didn't like it. It's loud, it's, it's uncomfortable, you know. Um, I love this. I love it. Because design thinking is about solving the customer problem. Yeah. Put the patient in your question, solve it for us. So Great. the market went huge for us by this smart idea came from one of our colleagues. That's great. Yep. At the end of the day, we are solving and sharing the knowledge from user to user. Design thinking talks about expert leading expert by listening to customer and human center approach that's how we are doing it so a couple of weeks ago since we spoke about madison wisconsin we had a user group meeting we invited ramesh lakshmipadi from desal system he is living in florida mm -hmm. he said okay i am ready to assist and volunteer for this event he's shown us how a non-linear spring works remotely while we are attending this meeting that collaboration, communicating with one another is most important um, to get our job done. Yeah. Uh, Ramesh, uh, you know, 
been one of my colleagues for over a decade now. Love Ramesh. You, it's so great to, that you guys got a chance to work with him. I even recognized his avatar in that photo in the upper right corner, that little thing. <laughs> I recognized it from here. That's Ramesh. <laughs> yes, yes. Design thinking talks about collaboration and knowledge sharing. So that's all we are doing it. Awesome. And most important thing is, like Thomas Edison said, there is always a way to do it better. Let's find it. Mm. What a great, what a great quote to end um, this entire idea of design thinking. There's always a better way to do it. Find it. Uh, you know, sometimes as designers, you hear design saying, "Oh, everything's already been done." You know, everything like everything's already been thought of. We're just assembling other people's ideas together. Well, well, that is important and and somewhat accurate. There is always a better way to do it. You got to put the work in to find it, right? Exactly, Andrew. It's it's really, really, you know, sharing with one another, collaborating with one another, understanding other person pain point as a empathetic view really helps us to move this entire design process, design thinking forward. Going back to for any user. Yes. No, going back to that 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 initial kind of diagram starts with empathy. So understanding every single person along the way. And, and understanding where they are. Try to put yourself in their shoes and the challenges they have. Uh, that's a great, that's a great place to start. And I mean, Didi, you are a perfect person for that because, uh, you know, I could see you being such a, an amazing overseer of like an entire process, working with everyone so empathetically, asking, asking genuine questions, wanting to help out in every step of the way, but also using all that information to build the plan. Uh, that's cool. Really, really cool. We are just following all of you, especially the put plan put together by Edison. So at the end of the day, helping, collaborating, solving critical problem helps everybody. That's awesome. Well, Didi, this has been, I mean, for me, uh, I hope it wasn't just me just being excited about all the stuff that you're showing. I hope that we, <laughs> I, I helped you guys through and didn't talk too much. I probably did talk too much. I'm sorry about that. No, uh, it's but, very good. But, uh, very good. Very good. <laughs> Great, great presentation that I love being a part of. Uh, thanks for taking the time to put that together and uh, showing it to us and our community. Um, just like, just like your your design thinking ideas, like you're, you're sharing you're sharing your ideas with with our community, and who knows what sort of ideas that can that can then lead on. Exactly, exactly. So, and the most important thing is platform connects everybody. So when you are in platform. <laughs> No, I, I, you took the words out of my mouth, but there you go, for sure. Because, you know, Design Live is a platform. Through that platform, we are talking today. That's right. That's right. I mean, yeah. it, it's so cool how you guys use, you know, SolidWorks and, and, and Desso Systems tools, like the 3D Experience platform tools, and yeah. Abacus yeah. to do all this work and collaborate and communicate. I, I love, love that. I love that. Well, thank you so much, Didi. Uh, I think... So, and thank you all for joining us for SolidWorks Live Design on this Friday. Uh, I, but before we go, just figured we'd spend a minute and plug our next event, if that's okay. So next Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern, I'm going to look at my the slide here. Yes, 11 a.m. Eastern. Next Thursday, September 27th, we are doing the SolidWorks What's New 2024 SolidWorks Live. It's a big one. Um, I will, I'll be there. Uh, I, I hope you all will be there as well. Uh, we're going to showcase uh, our producer in the background. He created this image, Jesse, in, uh, who's, who's producing this episode. He built this image using SolidWorks Visualize. Uh, and this is incredible. I mean, on first glance, it looks like a photograph. It's so amazing. Uh, but we'll be showing what's new in SolidWorks 2024. Uh, can't wait to be there and uh, with a whole team of us to show you that. And uh, for me, Andrew, I just want to say thank you to everyone for coming and joining us today. Uh, all the questions in the chat, thank you guys so much. Uh, of course, a final thank you to Didi, a friend, a partner, a colleague for many, many years. So thank you all. Have a wonderful weekend. It's Friday. And we'll see you all next week. Thanks so much.